Now let's add some lasers that use a music file for the emission. So first we'll right click and add a particle system. And make sure that's inside of this face tracker. And I went ahead and renamed these objects just to tidy it up. So now we have a particle emitter right in your head. Let's move that forward. And then just rotate the whole thing negative 90 in the X. So we're facing towards ourselves, just like the stars. I'm going to remove the tilt, remove the spray angle, the speed. Let's change to 20% in the randomness. We'll be using a line. Let's set it to one for now. And let's rotate it 90 in the Z as well. So it's up and down. And I'll increase the birth rate just so we can see it better. Then the lifespan should be maybe 10. Speed will be quite a bit higher. Now that's starting to look good. Let's just pause real quick and move this over. And then turn it from world space to local. And we want this to be pretty close to the side of the body, but maybe not quite clipping. So I think the length might need to be as much as two or even three. That should work. Now let's duplicate this, rename it to lasers right. And I'll just pull that to the other side. And if this is negative 0.22, then this should be a positive 0.22. So it should be perfectly offset from the other one. So now for the materials, let's scroll down and add a new material. We'll set this to flat and then name it matte laser one. And we'll use laser one texture. And these particles are really small, so let's make them a lot larger. Maybe 0.2 for starters. And right now they're billboarding, meaning they're always facing the camera, which we don't want. So let's turn off billboarding. So that looks like the right orientation. They're flat in this direction. but they are facing up and down and they're not double sided. So in the lasers, right, I'm going to scroll down and grab that material, turn on double sided. And then in the emitter, we need to rotate the orientation. So I'm not exactly sure <laughs> which one it'll be. Looks like 90 degrees in the Z axis is what we need. Now you can see these blue lasers are pointing back in space. And right now, because we're using a line, we are getting some intersecting planes. So let's actually change these from a line to a plane. And so the Y value will be three and the X can be pretty small. Maybe 0.2 is fine. Now I'm just going to hide this left one really quick. So now we just need to unrotate this in the Z and then change the particle rotation. Oh, that was confusing. Okay. It's 90 degrees in the X and 90 degrees in the Z. So now if we pause it, you can see we have a little bit of depth here. Maybe you can see it better up here. So now these won't be intersecting each other as much. And we just have a little bit more parallax. We can probably increase the width of this to 0.2 in each of these. And then make sure to update the rotation in both of them as well. Now I'll unhide this other one. And it looks like we need to unrotate in the Z again. Okay, so now we're 
in a good spot. We just need to make another material for the other laser. I'll just duplicate this one, and it automatically names it laser 2, which I'll assign to lasers left. So now we have two rows of lasers going behind us. And these are all blue right now, so let's change the second laser. So now we have two different colors. But I think I have a lot more textures than that. Let's see. We have... Looks like six textures, so let's just duplicate both of these once. And I'll call it left one and left two. And right one and right two. Then I'll duplicate this material two more times. And this is actually a little confusing. I'm going to rename the right ones to three and four. That way we can assign the lasers to the appropriate numbers. So that we have one, two, three, and four. So now we just need to update the textures for each of these. So we have three here and four here. And we are still getting alpha clipping. So let's select all of these, go to advanced render options and turn off right to depth buffer. And then we get the full brightness. They're not clipping out anymore. And it looks like both of the textures on the right are green. So let's maybe change number four to a different texture. Let's try five. There we go. And actually, both of them on the left are quite blue, so I might change one of those as well. Let's try the number two and just pick another one at random. I actually kind of like that. We have purple on both sides and then green and blue on either side. And of course, pick whatever you want for this, but this is just where I'm going. So right now we have a constant emission rate, which is fine, but we're going to use music to control the birth rate. So I have an audio track here. And we need a bunch of patches to kind of put this all together. So if we right click and just click audio, you can see all of the audio patches here. So we need an audio player. And you can see the audio file itself is the audio clip. So we'll plug that in. And then here it says controller. So if we right click, go to audio and scroll down, we have a single clip controller here. So we'll plug that into the controller. And now we have audio. So if we pull that audio out under audio, we can grab an energy meter. And then if we want to actually hear the audio, we need a speaker. So let's just add an object. Go down to speaker. And we'll click the audio patch button here. That creates a patch. So I think we could grab the audio from here or the audio from here. I think it's all the same. And for cleanliness, I think it makes sense to keep it kind of all the way at the end. And right now, I don't hear anything because we haven't played it yet. So I'm just going to add a pulse in here. And I'll plug that into play and loop. And the pulse I pulled out of turned on. So as soon as we turn this on, so I can hear it. I don't think I have it set up for the desktop audio. So you shouldn't be able to hear anything. But there's music playing in my headphones. So I know this is all working. But we don't have this plugged into anything else. So nothing else is really happening. So let's grab all these lasers and then grab our birth rate. And that will make a patch for each of the ones that was selected. And now if we look at this energy meter, if I toggle this again, you can see the energy meter is going between zero and 
maybe 0.2. I wonder if that has to do with the volume. Okay, it looks like it's independent of the volume, so I just have this turned down so it's not blasting in my ears. So if the birth rate is 100 right now, and this goes between 0 and 0 0.2, we obviously need to multiply it. So let's grab a multiply patch. And if we multiply by 100, we're only going to get as much as 20 as the maximum birth rate. So let's increase it to 300. And we'll plug this into all four patches. So now you can see the particles have stopped emitting. And if I toggle this on to play again, you can kind of see, obviously you can't hear the beat, but it's going more or less with the beat. And to further exaggerate this, we could actually subtract a little bit so that it has to go over a certain threshold before it will actually emit. So if we're getting up to around 0.2, let's subtract 0.1. Now I'll reset this again. So now you can see it's really going with the beat, and when it's a little bit quieter, nothing's being emitted. And you could take it one step further and control the speed with this setup. So with all four of the particles selected, click the speed patch. And then we'll just drop these down here. And right now the speed is as high as one. So we can just take this and multiply it. And if this tops out at around 0.2, to get to one, we might have to have it at around five or so. So now when it's quieter, they're gonna go slower, and when it's louder, they're gonna go faster. So I'll play that song again. So now I get a lot more variety in the speed because obviously there's different energy levels coming out of this song. So when it's louder, it's going to be faster and more particles. When it's quieter, it's going to chill out and be a little bit slower. And I don't know why it's not looping because I have this pulse going into the loop, but maybe that's not how this controller works. It seems like this loop should be a Boolean and not a pulse, but I don't know. Anyway, so that's how you use audio input. I think it could be a microphone, or in this case, it's a music track. And you use the energy meter to figure out how intense it is. And then from there, you can use it to control pretty much anything in your scene.